Starting with goal five, the division with manipulatives takes on a little bit of a different flavor. And it really allows students to see if they truly understand what it means to divide some quantity into either equal groups or a given number of groups. I've learned that when I'm asking students to use manipulatives, if they're a dynamic manipulative, I can ask students to set up 32 before I tell them how much to divide by. And this is a really key aspect if I want to avoid having students use some kind of repeated subtraction approach, which of course, I really want them to move beyond that strategy of counting in one fashion or another. So I've asked students to set up 32, and if they're using a Slavonic abacus, it will probably look something like this, three equal rows of 10 plus two more. If they're using unifix cubes, it'll probably look like the image on the right. Then I'm gonna ask them to divide by eight. And I've tried a whole lot of different kinds of wording. Uh, I wanna set it up so that students can either use partitive division or measurement division, and that my directions aren't leaning them one way or the other. It's actually true though, that probably more of them are going to use measurement division than partitive. But I think that's in large part because it's easier to put things into groups of eight than to sort of randomly try and figure out how many should go in each of eight equal groups. So here we see students showing with both the Slavonic abacus and the unifix cubes that they divided 32 into groups with eight in each group. These are examples of measurement division. Here are some students who said we traded to make groups with eight in each group. So they pushed two beads from each of the three complete 10 rows to back to the right and then traded those on the bottom row so that in the end they wound up with four equal groups with eight in each group. And the students with the unifix cubes did something very similar. They took two off of each group of 10 and gave them to the bottom row until they had four equal rows of eight. We have some other students who used partitive division where they thought about, we wanna make eight equal groups. And I've had students talk about a lot of different strategies for figuring that out. In the top examples, you see that they probably did some kind of guessing and checking and said, well, you know, maybe there are three in each of the eight groups. And as they played with that, they realized, no, there must be four in each of those eight equal groups. On the bottom, you'll see that the students probably did something more like taking the top row and splitting it up into eight equal groups and doing that with each of the three complete rows and then realizing that they had some beads over on the right that they could slide over trade and wind up with another complete row of eight that allowed them to have those eight vertical groups. And you can say, see the same thing over on the right with the unifix cubes. If you're going to use one of the other two manipulatives that we've been talking about, you might consider using the happy hundreds chart. And in this case, the students can definitely show three rows of 10 and two more with that first initial direction of setup 32. Once they've done that, then I'd recommend actually that you have the happy hundreds chart in some kind of a sheet protector and that students have the ability to mark on that sheet protector, and then they'll be able to draw groups with eight in each group, and they'll just have to get a little creative on that last one. So that works relatively well, and students can erase the sheet protectors and then just try different approaches. If you're using the animal strips, these have kind of the limitation that they're already set up in groups of eight, which is wonderful in many cases, but with division, it is likely to simply have students think multiplication to make the connection to division. So for instance, a student might show four rows of eight, they've done something to rem remember that that's gonna give them 32, 
and then they say something like, I know that 4 times 8 is 32. So if I split 32 up into groups with 8 in each group, that will make 4 groups. So in the end, 32 divided by 8 is going to give them 4. These are all various ways that students can tackle this slightly more complex approach to division with goal 5.